So today I want to talk about relationships and I want to talk about how to avoid dating toxic men. So the reason why I'm talking about this is because I've been putting a lot of thought into the intentional decisions that I make in, in life and thinking about how do I create and manifest healthy, positive relationships, whether it's a dating relationship, whether it's your personal relationships. I'm always thinking of ways to be a better version of myself and to be a healthier version of myself. And so in doing so, <clears throat> sorry, my voice. Okay, so, and in doing so, I have to also reflect back to the past and think about the decisions and choices I made and also hold myself accountable to those decisions that I made that led me to the place that I am today. So to tell you a little bit about my dating history without getting too much into the details, because I've always been a pretty private person, um, especially when it comes to my personal life, and my dating life. But I did want to share some general personal details so that it can give a little bit of context to the conversation without sharing too much. So what's going on with my hair? I feel like there's a piece sticking out. So my dating history is pretty a uh, pretty short it's a long and short story at the same time but the short story of it is i've only had one long-term relationship and it was for several years and i could tell you the year or the amount of years that it was and to one person they could be like oh that is such a long time and then to another person they could be like oh yeah i guess and another person they could be like oh girl that's not long at all blah 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 so i'll just say it was several years and for me it was a very long relationship and it was my only serious relationship um so up and like previously so yeah so i had one long-term relationship and the person that i dated he was very similar to me like our personalities were very similar and we I wouldn't say we look similar, but we looked like a couple. Like we looked like what you would, ex like if you looked at us, you would like be like, oh yeah, you guys are a couple. Like if you saw us like walking down the street and we were like holding hands, you would assume like obviously because we're holding hands. But even if we weren't, just us being together with the vibe, most people thought would think that we we're a couple because we kind of have like a similar vibe. Um, we also kind of had a similar style, you know, fashion-wise not totally but in some areas like the sporty vibe and then we also have similar interests and we also have similar energy like very intense kind of uh fiery energies so um that relationship obviously didn't work out because it was my ex and for the longest time i was like struggling to figure out the part that i played in it because I feel like a lot of times in a relationship, sometimes there's like the one person in the relationship that's like the catalyst for the destruction of the relationship. And sometimes it could be both parties. And then, but I also feel like even if you weren't the catalyst to the destruction of the relationship, you still played some part and you still have to take accountability for that part you played. Now, what that part is, it's different for everybody, depending on your situation, depending on your relationship. But it took me a while to come to terms and take accountability for the fact that even though I felt like my ex was the catalyst to the destruction of the relationship, I now can look back and say, okay, well, these are some things that I did that negatively contributed to the relationship, or these are some things that I didn't do that I could have done that was on me. So that took a really long time um, to acknowledge because for the longest time, I just wanted to say, well, it was his fault, it was his fault. He's the reason, he's the reason. And it's like, yeah, he might've been the major reason, but he wasn't the sole only 100% the reason. Um, I think that for me personally, the, like one of the parts that I played, which maybe the part that you played doesn't sound as drastic or as like a deal breaker that's like relationship ending but i still feel like in my that relationship i saw signs that it wasn't going to be a healthy relationship and i saw signs that it was the end long before it ended and i chose to stay i chose to stay because in my mind i thought 
oh, I was always like raised with the idea that you, you don't just give up. You always stick it out and try to work things out. And so I stayed in that relationship way longer than I should have because of that, um, that belief. And not to say that the belief isn't right. Like I still do believe that you should fight for what you love and for what you want. But there also is a certain point where you have to look out for your mental health and you have to assess whether this fight is worth your mental health in the long term and whether it's going to lead to your happiness because ultimately um, we should be striving to be happy healthy individuals and i feel that if we're in a relationship and the relationship should add to that um, another thing that i feel like i contributed is the part that I played in the codependency because I felt like the longer that the relationship went on, I got really comfortable with just relying on him and just doing things with him all the time. And it took me a little bit of time to kind of like break away from that codependency. And when I did, it was great. It was like, okay, great, I'm good. But it did take a while and I have to own that. I have to own the fact that I was also a codependent person in that relationship for quite a long time and I had to make a conscious decision no longer to no longer be codependent. Yeah. So um, another thing, so that relationship ended past and then I realized that after that relationship I was going through this period of being single and I was just, you know, kind of replaying some of the traumas in some of the new men that I was going on dates with and meeting. And at the time, I wasn't even realizing or acknowledging that I was going through this pain and I was going through, like really going through the breakup. I would, you know, treat men as, uh, treat men a certain way because I felt I was treated a certain way or at sometimes not be attentive to or treat men like they're a little bit disposable. Like, oh yeah, that guy, whatever, whatever, whatever without actually taking the time to get to know him as a person and really value him as a person and as the man that he is. So I take, an, I take accountability for that. When I look back and I think to um, those days of like after I uh, ended my relationship with my ex, how I was out on the, the scene, the, the dating scene, or I guess you would call it, and I wasn't really being intentional. I was just being selfish and part of me thought oh well I felt like I was so selfless in my relationship that it's it's my time now I I could have whatever I want and I'll do what I want and I shouldn't care how it affects other people but that's just not true because every action that you take especially towards another person is going to affect them so if you are projecting your past relationship traumas or whatever traumas from your past onto any individual that you meet or spend time with, you have to hold yourself accountable to that. And I'm glad that years later, I can say that, yes, I, it was not right of me to project my past traumas from my relationship onto um, prospects, new prospects, the men that I was dating or going on dates with. But I'm also not hard on myself because, you know, I, I'm, Nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect. We're all here to live and learn. So I am gracious with myself and forgiving of myself, but I also just want to be clear on what, how I carried myself in the past so I can set clear intentions for the future and how I choose to carry myself. And so I noticed that a lot of the time when I was going on dates, like after that breakup, I was meeting the same kind of man like it was different men but it was like the same type and these men they had like very I said I would say they had toxic traits that was similar to my ex and so it also took me a while to realize that if you don't do the work on yourself and you don't put in the work to heal yourself and grow and become a better person then you are just going to attract the same type of person and if you are in an unhealthy place and um, 
dealing in unhealthy ways, then you're gonna attract other people who, well, you're most likely to attract other people who are in a similar mindset. And so fast forward to um, the more recent time um, when I've been, you know, like this time where I've been kind of putting some thought, more thought into, you know, the past and, you know, assessing you know, my journey from then till now. And I've, you know, I'm pretty proud of myself because I feel like I'm a lot more intentional with um, the people that I meet and the type of people that I attract into my life. And when I did end up going um, back and uh, trying dating again, after those um, toxic experiences, I noticed that the men that I was meeting, the men that I were meeting were not the same toxic type of men that I was meeting before. I was meeting good quality men who are good people. Not to say that those other people were not good, but they may have not been in a place in their life to be able to be healthy and whole um, mentally, physically, to be able to then offer that energy to somebody else. Whereas I feel like now that I've I mean, it's not like an end of the road heal that moment, like we're always on a journey of healing, but I feel like I've put in a lot of work to work on myself. And I feel like that is the reason why I was able to start attracting more positive type of energies, more healthy type of energies. And I would say this is not just, doesn't just apply to when you're dating. I would say this applies to life in general. When you are intentional and when you, um, are putting in the work to be a healthy and whole person, then you will also likely attract others who are in the same place. And that's not to say that um, people who are not in that place won't come around in your world or in your life, but I feel like when you are in a healthier place, your discernment is stronger and you're able to see these situations a lot more clearly rather than getting caught up in a situation with like a bad relationship, like a bad dating relationship or a bad friend or an unhealthy relationship or an unhealthy friend or an unhealthy family member that's just toxic to your uh, life and you accept them, you accept them. So yeah, I would say that it's nice that I have a much stronger discernment now and I feel like I can sense a lot better when I'm dealing with somebody who is, you know, a little, a little, like very, <laughs> a little or up to very deeply wounded with traumas and et cetera. So yeah, um, I'm curious as to what other people's experiences are, what other people's opinions are on um, just, the energies that they attract and their dating experiences in general not really having to share anything too specific um, because I'm not trying to bash anyone or to tear anyone down and I'm not trying to say that my ex is a bad person he's a great person he's very nice but uh, I just realized what I realized is that just because somebody's nice just because somebody's a good person just because somebody's beautiful that doesn't mean that they're the right person for you and so that took me a long time to come to terms with because i had this idea in my mind when i was with my ex for so long and him being the only uh, serious relationship that i had had i was like oh this this is it this is it i couldn't see anything else but after a while and after the breakup and going through the healing process, I realized like this person might be meant to be a great friend to me. And we're definitely probably meant to be in each other's lives, but I don't think that we're meant to be um, partners and definitely not like life term partners. So yeah, it was very, I would say it was very uh, relieving to come to that realization. It was like a huge weight was lifted off my shoulders because I had put so much pressure on myself and so much expectation on myself. And then to come to the realization that the person you thought was your person, there's no other way than to realize like, no, like I know myself a lot better now. And I know that the, the type of person that I'm more likely compatible with and the type of person that I'm least likely to be compatible with, if you know what I mean yeah 
So I'd love to hear your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Please like um, the video, please subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and please drop a comment down below and let me know how it goes. Let me know what if you have anything to share about comments about stuff that I talked about. If you want to share anything personal about yourself, don't have to go into any details. Share whatever you want to share. Don't share whatever you want to share. I look forward to hearing from you guys and I hope you guys like the video and hopefully I'll be making a lot more videos now and yeah hope you guys enjoy and have a great day and goodbye see you later